Well, he was my grandfather. Uh, he lived with us for many, many years, up until his death in 1961. He uh, was a steward on board the Titanic, but he was also one of the lifeboat crew, and he was allocated to lifeboat 15 as an oarsman, which was the last of the lifeboats to leave the ship. So with that as the last of the, of the boats to leave the ship? That's yes. That's quite a story, but mm -hmm. did he ever talk to you about it? No, or he said very little. I think it was quite a traumatic time in his life because he moved from another ship to the Titanic and took all the hotel staff on that other ship with him. And unfortunately, he was the only survivor of the group that moved across with him. So he never went back to his original ship and he never really talked about it much after that. So how do you know what you do know? Research. Uh, we have quite a lot of family heirlooms, if you like, documents and what have you. We have an original newspaper from New York of the time where he gave a long multi-page interview. So we've got the full story of what actually happened to him on that night until he left New York. And what, what did happen as far as you're aware? Uh, he was allocated lifeboat 15 as an oarsman. Uh, he went on deck after the collision, saw nothing went back to his cabin. He was called to take his place on lifeboat 15. Being the last to leave, it was fully loaded. And uh, the story involves, uh, revolves around the newspaper, what actually happened to him, rowing away from the side of the ship, what he saw that night, who he saw until he arrived on the Carpathia. He was taken on board the Carpathia with a lot of the survivors because that was the only rescue ship went back to New York with the ship, but his sister was living in New York, uh, went to find her. They found the story, found the newspaper. He was paid for the story because he had absolutely no money left in his pocket. He was standing up in his pajamas, pair of trousers and overcoat, and that's all he had. So we've researched his story all the way through from beginning to end. And um, off camera we spoke about what happened to his wage, how his wage was worked out. Can you just tell me about that? Well, in those days when the ship sank, your pay stopped. That was it. We've got his original pay slip from the White Star Line Titanic, and he is actually paid for the crossing 15 shillings until the ship sank. He does receive a bonus, and that shows up on the wage slip, but that was a bonus because he was victualling the ship here in Southampton before he got on board for several days, and he was loading food and everything else. So he got a paid a bonus for that. But his actual salary was 15 shillings. So he was very lucky in as much that the family he met in New York put him in to um, reporters, and he was actually paid $69 for the story. And that, in 1912, was a lot of money. Yes, he, he makes a lot of comments in the story about the noise, the screaming that was going on in the water. And in one sentence in there, I think it sums it up. He says, if you've ever heard a pack of hounds being fed, that was what it sounded like. And then slowly it went quieter and quieter and quieter until there was no sound at all. They were asked to go back in by the women on board the ship to pick up survivors out of the water, but they were already overloaded. Uh, and they feared that if anybody hanging on the side of the boat would have tipped it completely over. So they had to make a horrible decision as to whether to go back in or survive with the number that they had on the lifeboat. And don't forget it was overloaded, being the last boat to leave. And I think that comes out of his story more than anything else, of what he ex heard and experienced that night. It wasn't until they made the film A Night to Remember with Kenneth Moore. They came and interviewed him for days and days and days afterwards. And he was invited with his son and myself to the premiere of the film in the Odeon Cinema. And there he met one of the other survivors who lived at Swanage with him, but didn't know him. And he met fourth officer Joseph Boxall, the only surviving bridge crew member. Uh, and they'd met before the Titanic, but they'd not met since the Titanic, so a bit of a story there. <laughs>